Hello and welcome to American Truth Project and ATP Report. Our special guest joining me, Barry Nussbaum, today is Claire Lopez. You know Claire from her many shows with ATP. She's uh, formerly a U.S. government person serving overseas, expertise with her CIA service, and many other things she can't talk about. Welcome back, Claire. Thanks, Barry. Glad to be with you. So let's talk about as we were talking on the break about your theory, which is really extraordinary. Um, over the past number of months, we have seen uh, a seemingly unrelated group uh, aligning, at least in activities with another group and then another group and another group, all of which seem to have one thing in common, they hate the United States of America. And you shared something with me that I haven't heard before which is that these groups, contrary to what the press might say or the uninformed might think, are really aligned behind the scenes, not only with their hatred of the American system, but their goal for the future. So mm -hmm. let's start with that. Right, so uh, with the tip of the hat to um, mentors of mine who've helped me to understand this, Trevor Loudon for one, Steve Coughlin and Rich Higgins for two others. Um, what we're talking about, I think, um, is the United States manifestation uh, attempted coup d'etat, um, but that is aligned not only internally, and we'll talk about these groups with each other, but with a broader globalist view of where the world should be going which is to the destruction of the Westphalian nation state system, institution uh, of a globalist, uh, centralized, authoritarian controlled uh, world. Now here in the US, how that, how that manifests itself is something I've taken to calling the red, black, green axis. Red stands for the forces of Marxism, Leninism, communism, Marxism, uh, the black stands for the Black Lives Matter movement, which itself is Marxist and also heavily Maoist. And green standing for Islam, the Islamic movement of the world uh, here in the United States, led by the vanguard of the Muslim Brotherhood. And you say, well, how could these groups so ideologically different possibly be aligned in anything like an axis? And the reason is that yes, even though they have very different ideologies, uh, for the moment they are concentrated on the same objective. And by joining forces, they take aim together at tearing down America, our foundational Judeo-Christian principles of the constitution, the declaration uh, and other uh, foundational documents. So well, let, let's, let's, uh, start with, let's start with Black Lives Matter because, and, and we, we talked about this before, um, off air, 99% of the people out there, Claire, that you would ask, hey, tell me about Black Lives Matter. What are they about? The spiel you would get, you know, from the NBA, from the NFL, from corporations that have donated hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars to this movement is they want to have America equal regardless of color. Are you saying that's not the goal of BLM? Certainly not the goal of BLM. The BLM movement, as I'll, as I'll call it. Um, for starters, the Black Lives Matter movement was explicitly founded by three openly Marxist American, African-American women, Alicia Garza, Opal Tometi, and Patrice Cullors. Each of them has a background in previous communist, Marxist, Maoist organizations like uh, the Freedom Road Socialist Organization and Liberation Road. Um, the manifesto, if you will, I think they call it a program of the Black Lives Matter movement now can only be found with the Wayback Machine, dates to 2016, and explicitly in a series of sections on that website, in that program, uh, BLM describes itself um, movement for Black Lives affiliated, describe, uh, describes itself as Marxist, uh, as communist, as viciously anti-Semitic, by the way, too, 
um, and dedicated to the objectives of the communist revolution uh, in, in both uh, Russia and China. Okay, so stop right there. That group that you just described, if a hundred Americans heard that description, 99, and I don't care about their background, political affiliation, left, right, conservative, progressive, liberal, whatever, would say, I, I don't want to destroy America. I just want America to be more equal. How did they get so mainstream that they can raise hundreds of millions of dollars a week and believe that they belong in a Biden administration should he become president? How did they sell it? Because the communist enemy is very, very good at influence operations, at propaganda, at packaging its messaging to target particular segments of society. Here, we're talking about African-Americans and those who, uh, like I think probably all of us, want to see a freer, fairer, um, more uh, inclusive America. We all want that but they know how to package that to disguise uh, what are in effect in the end, actually Marxist, communist, Maoist uh, ideas and objectives. Well, if you're right, and, and, I, and I think you are, I don't think there has been a better advertising campaign to divert the attention from the truth of what something is that's being sold in the mass media um, away from what it really is to what they want you to think it is. I actually read not too long ago that out of the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions that the BLM movement has uh, taken in their coffers, virtually, and I mean what I'm about to tell you, zero, and I mean nothing, has been spent to improve Black lives. What they do with the money. The issue is never the issue. That's why they're not funding um, better schools uh, in, in, in American cities, for example. Um, that's not the issue. That is the narrative. That's the meme um, that they use to capture the hearts and minds of well-meaning people and well-meaning foundations, because we can talk about all of these uh, philanthropic uh, foundations in America, Barry, that have given these hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, the Ford Foundation, the Plowshares Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation, the Tides Foundation, uh, Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream, uh, DoorDash, uh, Airbnb, and on and on and on, um, with one hopes or expects our, our good intentions to help people um, better their lives, better their children's education, better health care, all of that. But that's not what it's for. That's not what it's about. The issue is never the issue. Marxism, communism is the issue with Chinese characteristics, which is why I add the Maoist into there. Okay, so last question in this segment. There's a big push from the leadership of BLM to the Trump, sorry, <laughs> wishful thinking, to the Biden administration, should it become president uh, and take over the White House uh, next month, to be included in planning, policy, and actual appointments. And yet, so far, Claire, from what I understand, they're not being included at the table and yeah. they're angry about it. Yes, that's, that, that, that is almost, almost humorous. Um, a, a meeting uh, was held uh, not very long ago by the Biden team um, to, to include uh, various uh, African-American uh, groups and, and uh, interest groups and so forth. And... Um, well, uh, I guess Black Lives Matter, um, despite previous requests for meetings like this to be uh, included in invitations to meetings like this, they were not included. And uh, they've issued a, a, a very um, upset um, note, um, letter uh, to the Biden team 
about that uh, and essentially said, you know, we helped you get in there, uh, if he does, where, where you're going to be. We expect to be at the table and you better be listening to us because we're the ones that put you there. And the uh, implied threat uh, is if, if you don't, if you don't listen, if you don't, if you don't fulfill our agenda, uh, you know where we're going and that's back to the streets. And we will see if they carry out the threat. Claire, where can people find out about you? Well, I do not yet have a website, so I am uh, posting my articles and videos at different places, of course, including American Truth Project, but also at uh, the United West, at Sharia Crime Stoppers, at the Citizens Commission on National Security. Uh, I write frequently for my blog at Newsmax, and then also on social media, where I'm at Claire M. Lopez on Twitter, on Parlay, and the same name uh, at Facebook. And I admonish ATP viewers and fans, find her, follow her, you'll get educated. And for those of you that haven't yet subscribed to our text message alert system, please take out your, your cell phone, send the letters TRUTH, T-R-U-T-H, and you're gonna address it to the number 88202 in your phone, push send on a text message, You'll immediately get a response that will say you're confirmed, you're subscribed, it's all for free. You'll get all of our content on your cell phone. And you will get a, uh, a link on how to get the first few chapters of my new book, Because You Asked, all for free, just for being a supporter of ATP. The new book is out, it's on Amazon, but we're going to give you a couple of chapters for free. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum. Thank <laughs> you.